Okay, this is lesson two in the linear relations unit. We're going to be representing patterns again in this lesson, but this time focusing on tables and graphs, which give us an even different perspective on how these patterns are growing. So again, the key concept here is patterns in math can be representing in lots of different ways. Um, last time we did visuals, we did equations. Today we're going to focus on tables and graphs. We're going to look at the same three patterns we did in lesson one. So if you haven't seen lesson one yet, you should go back and watch that first. Um, so the first pattern we looked at looks like this, and we came up with an equation to represent that pattern. Um, but let's just make a table. So when we make a table, we like to start with the step number um, on the left. So I just use the numbers one through 10. And then we're going to write how many circles are in each step. And we're going to see a pattern in how this is growing here. So in step one, we've got four circles. You can count them, one, two, three, four. In step two, I've got seven circles. In step three, I've got 10 circles. And I can see a little pattern emerging here. Every single time I'm gonna increase by three. And that's because I can see that here, there's always being three at an extra three circles being added on in every single step. Um, so every time I increase by three. So we're gonna have 13 and then 16, we're gonna keep going down, uh, 19, 22, 25, 28, and 31. Okay, now let's make a graph to represent this pattern. The graph is gonna be useful to analyze this pattern. I'm gonna show you why in a second. I'm just gonna zoom out so we can see the whole graph. Important to label our graph. If, it, if the axes aren't already labeled, they are in this case, we should label them. Um, and I'm just going to call this graph circle pattern. And um, in this one, we've already chosen the scale. I chose it to be three because the pattern is growing by three. And it seems to be a reasonable number to where like I'm going to fill up most of the graph with, this, with the number of circles I've got. Um, and so let's plot each point. So one at step one, I'm gonna have four circles. So it's gonna be somewhere like here. Step two, I have seven, just above six. Step three, I've got 10, just above nine. Step four is 13, five is 16. And you can see my points are lining up in a straight line here. That is not a coincidence. That is because the pattern was increasing by the same amount every single time. So that means the points are gonna be lining up in a nice straight line. Okay, a couple of things to remember when graphing here, very important. Um, we need labels, which already was done for us here, but we're gonna to need to do that in the next step. Um, scales need to increase consistently so if you start going up by three, for example, you can't like then change your mind and start going up by six. Um, you always need to start at zero with the origin. Even if your pattern doesn't, need, doesn't start at zero. So notice here, right at the origin, that's called, we start at zero. That's very important. Um, and then the first co column in the table is your um, goes on the horizontal axis, the x-axis. And then the second column goes on the y-axis. So first column in the table goes on the x-axis. And the second column goes on the y-axis. That's just by convention so that we all get the same graph in the same table. Um, we always do that. So the, always the first column will go on the bottom of your graph on the horizontal axis, and then the second column will go on the vertical axis. The last point I wanna make here is this pattern is called linear. You're gonna spend a lot of time studying linear patterns in your next couple of years of math. Um, linear patterns are patterns that grow um, by the same amount every single time. I don't wanna that point there because it looks like it's part of the graph. Um, so the reason it's linear we know for two reasons. One because the points are lining up, points are in a straight line. And 
the number of circles is increasing by a consistent amount. Not all patterns are linear, but many patterns we see in real life are linear by a consistent amount. Okay, even in the name, it's easy to remember this name because it has the word line in it and the, the points are in a straight line. Okay, so two ways to tell that a pattern is linear. One, by just looking at the table. If your numbers are going up by a consistent amount every single time, or by looking at the graph, the points are in a nice straight line. We know that our pattern is linear. Okay, let's do the next two. Um, feel free to pause any time and try to graph it on your own and then come back in and see what I chose to do. Okay, so this one, recall that our equation for this pattern um, was 3n minus 1. Um, and so let's fill out the table of values. This one also happens to be a linear pattern because every time I am increasing by three, I'm always adding three on. Um, sorry. Yeah, I'm always adding three on to the pattern before it. So uh, two, five, eight, 11, 14, 17, 20, 23, okay. So the first column is gonna be our step number. That's gonna go on the horizontal axis. And I'm just gonna go up by ones for this. Remember starting at zero. Now what I like to do to make things nice and neat is just label every second one. So I have one, two, three, four. That way it's not so cluttered and it looks nice and neat that way. And then I have to choose a scale for my other axis. Now here, sometimes what I like to do is just see what I'm going up by and then use that. Um, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 11, 12 points here to work with. So number of triangles. Yeah, so when in doubt, a nice thing to go up by if you're starting pretty close to zero is just the number that you're increasing by. And here I can see I'm going up by three every time. So let's go up by three in my graph. So we have three, six, I'm gonna, nine, 12, I'm gonna again, just label every second one because that way it's nice and neat and I'm not too cluttered. 27, 30, and there we go. And then this is the triangle pattern. So at one, we have two, which is a little bit less than three. Then two, we have four, or sorry, five, which is a little bit less than six. And then we have eight, which is a little less than nine. And then we have 11, 14. So again, we can see here that these points are going up in a consistent way, in a straight line. Um, so this is a linear pattern. because again, the points are in a nice straight line and also we have the point values increasing by a consistent amount. Okay, and last one. Okay, let's fill out the table for this pattern. If you recall, um, this pattern increased quite quickly because we have these rectangles being built. So we had five in the first one um, we have 10 in the second one. Remember the, the equation was two plus n times n plus two. Um, in the third one, we have two plus 15, so 17. In the fourth one, I'm using the equation there, we have two plus uh, four times six, so that's 26. In the fifth one, it's two plus five times seven, so 37. In the sixth one, it's two plus six times eight, so 50. And then we have 65 and then 82. Okay, so we're, in, we're not increasing by a consistent amount here. So if we look at what we're increasing by, this is not gonna be a linear pattern because you go up by five and then seven and then nine. It's not a consistent amount. So this is not gonna be linear. So I'm not expecting these points to line up in a straight line. 
Okay, so let's figure out what we should go up by. I need to get all the way to 82. I want to use most of the graph, but I also want to use like, I mean, you, you might choose to go up by eight. Um, you could choose nine or 10 is a nice round number. So I'm going to choose 10. Um, as long as you're using most of the graph, that's good. And again, I'm going to only label every second point so it's not too cluttered. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And this is the number of squares. And then we have the step number here. And for that, I'm just going to go up by one, but I'm going to label every second one so it's not too cluttered. And let's just label the points as best as we can. So uh, at step one, we're halfway between zero and 10. At step two, we're exactly at 10. At step three, we're at 17, which is a little less than 20. Step four, we're at 26, which would be about here. Step five, 37, a little less than 40. Step six, 50. Step seven is 65, which is about here. Step eight is 82. We can do a couple more points because I have a little bit more space on my graph. Um, for step nine, it's two plus nine times 11. So that's 99 plus two, 101. And then for step, yeah, that's pretty good. Step 10, it's two plus 10 times 12. So 122, just above just outside of the, okay, so, and we can see that this is not a straight line. If I follow the points, it's kind of a curved line. It's not linear. And we need a title for our graph, so we'll call it the square pattern. And that's it. That's how to represent patterns with tables and graphs. And these give us even more information and more ways to analyze the pattern um, in addition to the equations and visuals we learned in lesson one.